According to the National Association of Resident Doctors, Nigeria loses more than 576 billion naira yearly to medical tourism. Over the years, the number of Nigerians traveling to the UK, US, India, China, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and other developed countries for the treatment of cancer, kidney, or liver transplant, heart or cardiac surgeries, neurosurgeries, uh, cosmetic surgeries, routine checkup, and baby deliveries has been on the rise. For medical doctors in Nigeria, a good work environment, good pay, and adequate facilities would ensure excellent delivery of services. But when these are unavailable, many citizens tend to pay so much money for access to quality health care abroad. This results in a huge loss of huge foreign exchange that could have been deployed to revamp our aging hospitals and create jobs. Many people who require foreign medical treatment for critical health conditions often face hardship in raising the huge financial costs associated with such trips. So how can the country overhaul its health system? That's the big question. Joining me in the studio to discuss uh, more of this as public health physician, Dr. Tui Mebawandu, thank you so much for being on the show with me. Thank you, morning. thank you always. Thank you for having me. Right, no, so just a few uh, days ago, the Nigeria Medical Association you know, disclosed that Nigerians uh, spend $1 billion annually on medical tourism. So this, some say, may even be uh, a conservative figure. What implication do you think this have on, uh, does this have rather, on our health sector? Uh, huge implications because, you see, what has happened is that the confidence, the, the, the kind of uh, trust which you have in our health system is being, is, has been eroded mm -hmm. and has been manifested in that medical tourism. And a lot of people existed in Nigeria to ourselves health care. Um, you know, if there has been a trust in the health system, we shouldn't have been seeing this. Um, you've seen that, you know, uh, in the past, within two years alone, 9,000 mm -hmm. uh, Nigerians left the shore of Nigeria to take care of their health. Yeah. You've mentioned some of those things, neurosurgery, kidney problem, uh, bone problem, yeah. you know, cosmetic surgery, even ordinary delivery, you yeah. know, and then they spent more than $1.2 billion annually, huge money. Um, and then India is the, is the biggest beneficiary. And the chief corporate, I mean, the chief, <laughs> you know, corporate in this, yeah. is actually the political leadership who mm -hmm. chose to look at it and say that, oh, we cannot trust the health system, then we need to go abroad. And people, some people try to justify this and say that, yo, you can take healthcare anywhere. Mm -hmm. No, I can, I can give you a clear example. It's in 1993 or thereabouts, um, Boris Yeltsin was the um, president of Russia. Yeah. They had Boris Yeltsin, Bo uh, the Boris, uh, sorry, Boris Yeltsin. UK. Boris Yeltsin was Yeltsin, the president okay. of Russia. They had to fly in um, Michael Dibeki to come mm -hmm. and do surgery for him in Russia when they needed that critical. Mm -hmm. So what is the problem? Why can't we? So because you are not trained enough doctor, you are not equipping your system, because the, the three great threats faced by the health system in Nigeria is that brain drain, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. medical tourism, and lack of fund and bad infrastructures. If you are not training, you cannot get people that's mm -hmm. going to take care of your health in this country. Mm -hmm. So until we try to see health as what it is, as a kind of, you know, non-kinetic warfare, to actually, because now the challenges of health of, of the country now may just be health. Health issues have moved beyond getting well. It has become an issue of, you know, uh, of survival of the country, mm. the economy of the country, uh, whether the country can compete in the world. Health is being factored in essentially. You look at Lagos as you see it, uh, when you're driving, even on the top of Milan, you yeah. see all this smoke everywhere, mm. polluting the environment. Everything is just a big issue, it's a big mess. Mm. You are actually complaining about that you know, the moment we about to start the program. But then we've read about medical breakthroughs in the country. For instance, you know, some neurosurgeons who are uh, who successfully separated conjoined twins. I think I read about that story in Nigeria. And they successfully carried out these, uh, these surgeries. Uh, but what kind of treatments do people seek often that we do not really render back here? Well, I, we've mentioned them. Essentially, you know, there are higher level of care. Yeah. There is shortage of those kind of hospital or facilities to do um, the, those high level treatment. Uh, you know, in Nigeria, human resources, um, infrastructure, mm. and then support system for that. You know, look, I, I commend some of those Nigerian hospitals that have been set up to perform those functions. 
But they are doing that at a huge cost, a huge cost, because you see, they have to fire their place. They have to even sometimes fly an expert from abroad to get this done. And then the challenge of security becomes another thing yeah. that is the chasing people away from the country. So we see, but what has happened is that even in countries like India, where you have to do a peculiar neurosurgical intervention, okay, or even atroscopic intervention, um, the, the waiting time is short, the cost is less, okay, mm -hmm. and then the experts are available in abundance yeah. under a secure environment. So if you really want to drive the health system, you look at it, Nigeria produces how many doctors in a year, maximum 3,000. Mm -hmm. We have a deficit of 320,000 doctors. So that means that we need 100 years to meet up if the population is not growing. Right now, we have just about 34,000 doctors running the affair in Nigeria. So now, and then if, if you look at the number of doctors that have moved away, we will be able to move our, no, our number of doctors in 17 years from three per 10,000 to four per 10,000. Mm -hmm. In 17 years, that was in 2018. Now, where, where, if we compare ourselves to Mauritius, 20, they have 27 doctors per. Yeah. On, uh, by 10,000, even as South Africa doubles our own. Yeah. So in reality, we're not ready, we're not training doctors. Look at the, uh, the connect between education and training of doctors as soon on strike, okay? And that is challenge, that is yeah. challenging the training in a way. Yeah. So we're not training, and then even the, the, the embrace of science, because if you don't embrace science in your secondary school, how do you now go ahead to become health worker? Yeah. It's difficult. Well, another, another way to look at this, which you probably may agree with is the fact that most Nigerians really do not like anything that has to do with something produced or offered or rendered within their country. They believe anything that comes from outside of the country mm -hmm. is the best. Even as <laughs> you know, close as Togo, do I say Togo, been a republic, people seeking education and all that. Could it be that it's just a portion, you know, the, the likeness that we have, the desire to be westernized, to enjoy what is from the western countries, not just based on some things that we lack here in the country. Do you also see it from that perspective? I, I don't see it from that perspective. Let me tell you, I, I went to school um, in the 80s, okay? Um, uh, secondary school in the, in, the, in the 70s and university in the 80s. Yeah. Those days, if you are going abroad to study, it means that you are not qualified to be admitted to universities there. So we look at yeah, them not, as... You're not up to yeah, standard. Yeah, you're not up to standard. We look at them as second rate, mm. in, in a way. Mm. So now, how did this thing happen? We start, you know, um, underfunding our educational system. We start underfunding the health system. We start allowing drugs to come into the health system. And lo and behold, before you know it, and then the reward system for even getting educated is not even there. And economists start dovetailing. Before you know it, we shifted. Because again, if you look at the industries in Nigeria those days, you know, you can see Copperfield, all sort of industry doing fantastically well and they were wearing their clothes. Mm -hmm. But suddenly all those things went down and subsisted by cheap imports. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, we lost what we should have maintained. Mm -hmm. So that is how it happened. It didn't just wake up and then we just started liking foreign things. No. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it cropped in gradually by our neglect mm -hmm. of what we should have done and raised the standard. It's not, it can't, even, even in some pharmaceuticals now, you see that Nigeria is actually manufacturing and sending to other countries. Mm -hmm. So what has happened that we chose mm -hmm. to market you know, um, foreign things? It's because there's a gradual deterioration. And then when you see your, a, a president who is ill going away to take treatment elsewhere, it when, affects yes, the, when you see the leaders of economy yeah. going away to hire somewhere, then it gives you a kind of mentality. Wow. There's certain information you are passing across. Mm. So the right, the right thing is for us to start improving our standard. You cannot just wake up and wish and legislate, oh, go and buy made in Nigeria. Then raise your standard first. In, in the 2022 budget, 724 billion naira, that's 4.2% uh, of the uh, annual budget was allocated to health sector, healthcare. So we are a country of over 200 million people. How significant do you think? That is, is three, that's 3,510 3, naira per person. That is what is given to, for everybody. All the year round, your health the government has put 3,510 3, naira to take care of your health. So that's, let, let me conceptualize it. Now, the primary health care center, 30,000 of them all over the nation, they got 24 billion. That means that they've given each primary health care center in Nigeria 800,000 naira to run for the whole of the year, including anything. So now, we, here we are. 
how do you now <laughs> really change health with those kind of pitians? That Those are no money. Mm. 300, the 3,000 naira for you to run your health system, your health for the whole year. And the primary health care that should take care of 70% of the population. Because normally, 70% of the population will be patronized the primary health care center. The remaining 20% 20, 20 should go to state and 10% at the level of federal. But you see people with malaria going right ahead to the to, to teaching hospitals, you know, or maybe federal medical center. It, it shouldn't be. That should have been taken care of at the level of, of the primary health care center, where we have just 800,000 naira to manage one. Mm. That's amazing. I'm thinking medical tourism does not only involve the Western medicine. Can this term also be used for traditional medicines? Because we know that some people also go out of this country, say India, for instance, and some other countries to see uh, traditional medicine. What would you say as regards this? Is it, should it be a combo that we should work on so that whether it is traditional or Western medicine, we should be you know, on, on top? Yeah, we see the, the rise of Ayurvedic in India, you know, is, became a game changer for them. Not only in exporting some of these Ayurvedic products, but also, you know, drawing people. Because when you are seeking for health, you are seeking for health. Yeah. When, you know, people look like a mix of, you know, healthcare now. Yeah. They don't just wake up and say, you know, it has to be this and that. But yeah. there's always a place for those traditional things. But now, the challenge of standards mm. in our traditional medical system, it's the issue. I remember those days, the, 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 the board for traditional medicine in Lagos State was headed by a medical doctor. But I don't know what is happening now. So a medical doctor that has a good interest in, tra in, in traditional medicine yeah. will be able to really look at that standard and see where is the gap between these two. Yeah. So the narration is not that, you see, a, a silo kind of thing where traditional runs like this, uh, orthodox runs like this, another one runs like that, mm -hmm. spiritual runs like that. Mm -hmm. We must be able to see a convergence where, at the end of the day, Everything is contributing to the total, the, the, to the national health system mm. and giving good life to people. Mm. Well, if, I'm not sure, come to think of it, can health tourism be all rosy? I mean, are there risks involved in Indeed. embarking on this practice? Indeed, there are risks because, again, there are, there are a lot of charlatans, you know, um, taking over the health system. People just look at it because there's another aspect of it. There's an incentive, silence incentive, which is not right medically being given to people that can send clients yeah. abroad, you know, by different hospitals. We know it's not, it's not right mm -hmm. medically. So what that means is that, first and foremost, there is a kind of exploitation of those people sent there mm -hmm. because, you see, the more money you get from them, the more the, the percentage that comes yeah. to, the, to, the, to the person referring them. So mm -hmm. that's a, Then secondly, you cannot seriously, uh, you know, assert your authority. How do you... If you have challenges with the medical legal issue, how do you push in the country where you are not resident? You know, these, these areas are not being tidied. If, it, if, if there's a mistake from an hospital, how do you really ask for your right in that kind of environment? Mm -hmm. So then you, 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 are, you cannot vouch for some of those um, uh, uh, triangulation or process being carried out. Mm -hmm. So that, those are the risks. And then at the end of the day, um, it tends to be kind of, if, if the government the receiving, the, the, the receiving country is not very tough with their medical law, anything can happen. It will just be anything goes. All right, so we, we always look for ways to curb this practice, to at least reduce it to bare minimum. Just as calls are out to make it illegal for public office holders to send their children abroad for as long as they tarry in office, is it okay to say that if you're in office, we'll make it mandatory to be part of our law, to make it illegal, for you to go out to seek for medical, you know, treatments, is it? Do you think that's that's one of the ways to, to, to curb it? Again, health has a peculiarity. It's going to be really, really difficult for for one to say that you know you cannot look for health wherever you can find it. Mm -hmm. But what you should make available is this: that we, we must be able to have clear cut centers, you know, high level centers, you know, properly equipped to take care of those critical areas. We're talking about nephrology, which is kidney. Mm -hmm. We're talking about neurology, brain. We're talking about cosmetic surgery. We're talking about, um, you know, um, orthopedics. These are some big areas, you know, where, we, what, what is wrong in us having those centers and training and really equipping them? In fact, what, is the, what we should be looking for is training in such a way that, you see, you look at, for instance, if you're conversant with Hammer Memorial or something like that, or Mount Sinai or yeah. Mayo Clinic, I said that, listen, we're training mm. with you. Um, can you also help 
um, our people in this regard, our yeah. this hospital, yeah. the, the military are there where they, they can have a recovery center. NMPC is doing a lot of things. Let them yeah. do something big by setting up a level four medical center in the country. So we look at that mix of where, you know, and then, the, and then what should happen is that, you see, the financing of health needs to be really be tidied. Yeah. Because what we need to do is look at it that a level of primary health care is taken care of. But if you have to go to tertiary, government pays part of it, and then insurance cover part of it. Yeah. We, can, we can think of this mix. It's not too difficult. To, but again, what are the big elephant in the room is, is, is the level of corruption and insincerity mm -hmm. and political um, sloganeering. Mm -hmm. Nothing in that regard, nothing better than what we've seen in the country. In 2020, 2021, we've had, um, you know, Nod, Johesu, you know, going on strike and all that. Uh, what do you think we need to do, you know, really to put on ground to ensure that strikes are averted? Um, requests are actually, whenever they make requests, this is what we want, the needs are actually met. What are the things that you would like to say, you know, on this platform at the moment? Governance. As we, as we governance. There's what we call health governance. What has happened essentially is that we've seen quite a lot of brilliant mind from Nigeria in terms of, you know, interventions, health interventions. But what is missing is that the critical issue is a, is a, is a, a different skill set. Yeah. If you need to run health system and ensure proper governance, you have to know negotiation skill, interpersonal relations skill. It's not the skill of how to hold knife or where to cut. So you know you must be able to really input into medical training some you know um, a business management skill that can raise them to understand what, what governance is all about. Then the, the other thing is that government must be able to move beyond all um, not honoring agreement. Mm -hmm. If you cannot honor agreement, why do you sign an agreement? So, you know, then one of the key issues that the interpersonal relationship between different cadres of health workers. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to take this, you're not supposed to take this. A negotiation system, and then for me, I, I'll be looking at uh, incentive-based Performance-based incentives, incentives in a way that listen, guys, this this is the baseline of money you can have. But when you do this number of this, this number of these things, it goes to this form, mm -hmm. okay? And then even the compensation mechanism has to change. You cannot just be saying that you cannot be throwing money at anything. If I am a doctor and I'm sure that I have an insurance to mm -hmm. take charge of my own. Um, for my two kids or yeah. three kids to the level of university and I can change, you can change my car for me every five years and then I have a residence where I'm paying little money. I know that all those basic things are met. Yeah. It becomes difficult for me to then to say, okay, listen, increase my salary because inspiration will be eating into that thing. So in reality, we have to change the compensation mechanism. Yeah. Then we have to look at governance in health system. Without governance, a, great, a good governance health system, we can't get the right health system that the workforce will be neat. Are you saying governance? When you say governance in health system, are you referring to the overall governance of in the, the from, country from, or in, in, in your union or in wait, from, trying to break yes, it down? Yes, from the Minister right. of Health, right. okay, to even the primary health care system, yeah. to the individual um, teaching hospitals, mm -hmm. federal medical centers, you know, it, we, we, we have to really be able to look for people that can synchronize and allow people mm -hmm. um, interpersonal skills, yeah. um, relationship, you know, all those things that has to do with human resources management, mm -hmm. yeah, and, you know, and management of resources. Mm -hmm. And then ensuring that you know, for whatever money we're putting there, we're getting the right bank for the money we're putting there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think this is a convenient place for us to actually leave it and continue to monitor the situations ac around the health <laughs> sector in Nigeria. So we yeah, just pray so. everything happens just exactly the way we want to see it at the end of the day. Phys uh, public health physician, Tui Mebaudu, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Program. Thank you for, for the opportunity. Right. Thank you.